Salve, omnes, salve. Welcome back again. This is Marius Glaubius, your host for Latin Language Revival on this YouTube channel, and I appreciate you joining again. Uh, today's presentation is on Publius Vergilius Maro, a.k.a. Virgil the Poet. Many of you may have heard of Virgil the Poet uh, through school teachings or maybe university in classics. Um, Virgil was very, very popular in his time period, um, in the peak of his career as a writer. Uh, this was during the early imperial period of Rome. He was born in 70 BC and then died in 19 AD. Only lived to 50 years old, so any illustrations of him anywhere will always show him as fairly young. Uh, we have this depiction on this slide where he is sitting between two muses, the muse of writing and the muse of poetry, I believe. I don't know their names. They're, they do have names to them. And muse, a muse, M-U-S-E, was considered a divine inspiration personified uh, for those that were in the arts. Uh, and in this case, he was a writer, a poet, and um, very popular, again, as I said, during the Augustan era. He wrote the Eclogues, the Georgics, which we will get into maybe at a later point. But in today's presentation, it's the Enid. The Enid was a highly, hugely popular book. Consider it almost like an epic movie in today's terms. Um, that's how the, well, the upper echelons of Roman society would enjoy their pastimes through readings and novels that were, or epics that were written during these, this period, and also from more ancient writers. Uh, for example, Homer, the poet who lived during uh, centuries, many centuries before in the ancient Greek era, uh, he wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey, and then Virgil took it upon himself to write the Enid as sort of a sequel to the Iliad. Um, the story behind this is that the Romans were descendant of the Trojans, who uh, Aeneas, being one of them, fled the, the war-torn kingdom of Troy after the Greek alliances um, attacked it. And this, is, this goes back to the story of Helen of Troy. Very fascinating story. The Enid, there isn't a movie in modern times based on the Enid, although it would be awesome if that were ever to be produced. Um, another thing that he was known for uh, was delivering the eulogy speech for Augustus Caesar. I usually compare that to, say, Elton John when he delivered the eulogy speech for Princess Di. I think that's very, very much a good match to that because that's how popular Augustus Caesar was. He was beloved by his countrymen, uh, by society in general. He is considered to be the father of Italy, ter t coining the term Italy for the first time, Italia. Uh, and for the golden era, the golden age of Rome. It was so much famous, so famous was this author, Virgil, that children would be required to memorize it in school. Um, there's a lot of evidence in Pompeian graffiti, in a book that's called uh, Scribbler Scribes, and I can't remember what the other word is, uh, it's an awesome book. I'll present it sometime. Children had to would would actually write out of their own free will uh, verses of the Enid on Pompeian walls as graffiti. That's been discovered. I'm sure it was in other places, but being that Pompeii was very well preserved under the ashes of the volcano from the eruption of um, Vesuvius, uh, all this was conserved. So. Uh, and the reason why they know children wrote these is because of the height of the letters being written uh, that showed that. So, very interesting stuff.
The next slide. The next slide here shows the Trojan horse as in in the epic story of the Iliad when um when Troy fell. Uh, Aeneas being the one that fled and among others um was the title of the book The Aeneid. Here are some excerpts in Latin and in English in the following slides. Enjoy. Arma virumque cano, Troiae qui primus ab oris Italiam, fato profugus, laviniaque venit litora, multum ille et terris jactatus et alto, vi superum saevae memorem junonis ob iram. Arms and the man I sing who forced by fate and haughty Juno's unrelenting hate, expelled and exiled, left the Trojan shore. Long labors both by sea and land he bore, and in the doubtful war before he won the Latin realm and built the destined town. Multa coque et bello passus, dum conderet urbem inferret que deos latio, genus unde latinum, albanique patres, atque alta moenia Roma. His banished gods restored to rights divine, and settled sure succession in his line, from whence the race of Alban fathers come, and the long glories of majestic Rome. O Musa, mihi causas memora, quo numine la eso, quid vedolente, regina deum tot volvere casus insignem, pietate viru, tot adire labores impulerit. Tantaene animis caelestibus irae. O Muse, the causes and the crimes relate. What goddess was provoked in winter hate? For what offense the queen of heaven began to persecute so brave, so just a man? Involved his anxious life in endless cares. Is the rage of celestial beings this great? So, as you may be able to interpret from the opening lines, these are the opening lines to the Anid. Uh, it has as main characters uh, Aeneas and Juno, the goddess, uh, the mother of the god of war, Mars, and how the struggle from when Aeneas left uh, Troy until he reached the shores of the what is modern day Italy and how Juno made it extremely difficult for uh him to survive and in the end the the exasperated expression of our celestial beings this angry basically the rage that they have thank you for listening please subscribe wale